Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Hi, this is Jessica with Syosset Library's Turn the Page podcast. I am really excited to be talking to Rob Hart again. I believe I I didn't get to talk to you about Warehouse, but I did get to talk to you about um, the Paradox Hotel, which was super fun and now we're here to talk about assassins anonymous which is also super fun and very different from your other books so welcome rob thank you for having me back i appreciate it so talk to us a little bit about assassins anonymous because it was a fun ride it was um you know it, it had the mystery it had the thrills it had the uh, surprises and it was funny too uh where did this story come from it is quite different um from your other one that uh, we talked about as well. So I'm curious uh, what sort of helped you make this leap. Sure. Uh, I, well, I've been wanting to write an assassin book for a very long time, and I always thought it would be kind of interesting to do in, in sort of like a group therapy type setting. Uh, and then I realized like, oh, wait, but recovery programs are really interesting because part of a recovery program is is coming up with a list of people that you've harmed and, and making amends to them. And I'm like, oh, man, what would that look like for an assassin? And then, and then I thought Assassin's Anonymous, and I'm like, oh yeah, there's a book there. Uh, so it was it was definitely a little bit different, only in the sense that my last two books were very sort of sci-fi heavy and very research heavy, and they took so much time and so much effort. And this one, I just kind of sat down and started writing because the the burden of research was just slightly lesser. So you didn't do a ton of research into the life of the assassins then for this one. I mean, I did I did a little <laughs> bit of reading and a little bit of research, uh, but, you know, it, it's 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 a lot less than my last book, The Paradox Hotel, in which I was like, well, how does time travel work? Or at least how do I make it make sense to a reader? I think that that's always the difficult thing about something like time travel is that they have to buy it. But I suppose that's kind of every book in general, you need to be able to really sell it to the reader. And this one was just a lot of fun to read. Um, And it is, so it's the story of um, a man named Mark of all things, who is an assassin. um, And he has given up uh, killing because he's in this recovery program. And then as things usually happen, um, his past catches up with him and he finds himself in quite a few sticky situations obviously involving the fact that he killed a lot of people and he was well known for doing it and he was uh very good at it as well um when you know when you came up with the idea for the story did mark himself just sort of show up on the page or did you sort of um what was he like was he the original protagonist did you go through a few different protagonists he arrived pretty quickly and and i think it was i I made a decision very early on that i wanted to create a character that was like very funny and very charming and and sort of like not like, like he's not the kind of person you would look at and say oh yeah no he's a he's a professional killer uh, and, and that was for two reasons. One was the juxtaposition of him being like a super friendly, charming guy and then being an absolutely lethal killer. But also, I just needed him to be funny because I needed the reader to love him because if the reader doesn't love him, once he starts doing some really terrible stuff, then I'm going to lose the reader. So it was, you know, part mechanical and part just kind of like a funny thing. And the gallery of people who he interacts with uh did they write themselves as well oh absolutely that that was actually part of the fun and one of the things that had me so excited about this off the bat is like okay this is a recovery program for for professional killers so i get to i get to bring in a bunch of different interesting weird characters who have very very different backstories and kind of like mash them all together and play in this space and that is just really fun you know um like i like the idea of one guy being from the yakuza one but one guy being a freelance mercenary and you know one guy in the meeting is a serial killer and and there's diverging opinions about whether or not he should even be there so it's uh 
it's it's part of the reason I feel like I I hope the first book does well. I just turned in the second one. And after that, I'm out of contract, but I feel like I could write 10 more of these. And I, I think that would be a lot of fun. You actually just answered a question for me, uh, whether or not we were going to see any of these characters again, because uh, it is one of those books that you can kind of consider an origin story. Yeah. But it, it's got enough that you can kind of go back and uh play in the world a little bit more as well uh did you like did you find yourself kind of holding back from adding stuff that you wanted to add to future books then while you were writing this one I wouldn't say I held anything back I, I always assume that every book I write is going to be the last book that I write and then I'm never going to get this chance again even even within a two book contract I was just like yeah something's going to happen this is going to go sideways so let's just put everything I have into this uh, but the then the fun part is uh, I'm sort of shifting the POV a little bit from Mark to another character in the second book and getting to explore her backstory and how she got to where she is. But also now with that kind of added uh, underpinning of everything that happened in the first, like the second one kind of reframes some things that happened in the first, which is kind of cool. I also... Um was curious so i think actually i i have to say it now there was uh, the name of a character in your book which is actually the name of an author that i know who's been on the podcast before um carol geisander uh who you said won a contest to be a character in one of your books um yep. have a name uh so uh, congratulations carol i almost jumped out of my seat when i saw your name but <laughs> um there were some other fun connections uh, to Syosset. I don't know if you knew that while you were really? writing the book. Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, you talk a lot about the movie The Professional. And um, Natalie Portman was in The Professional, and she's also from here. She went to high school with me. Oh, okay. Yes. And when I was in, like, middle school or element not elementary school because she was she she was um, two years younger than me. So she was in middle school. She was sixth grade. I was eighth grade. And then we were in high school together, but I remember in middle school, like everyone was saying that they saw the professional. And I was like, when I eventually found out what that movie was, I'm like, what are you kidding? <laughs> but you know, everyone's like, yeah, I know a famous person. I know Natalie Portman. She was in this movie, the professional. And then, you know, I found out what that movie was about and I've seen it since, but you know, I'm just like, man, kids were watching that in sixth grade. Okay. Very inappropriate. Yeah, I don't know if they, I mean, I'm sure some of them were, but some of them might have just been saying that they were because they wanted to be cool and say that they saw this person who was in their class in a, a movie. But um, the other fun connection, aside from the fact that a pivotal scene takes place in Jericho, New York, which is next door to us, um, is the cup in the front of the um, the book. It's that coffee cup that's like almost like an iconic greek style cup um is was designed from someone in syosset from syosset really? yeah okay. yeah <laughs> so yes so uh i i found all of those things extremely amusing while i was reading the book and that's funny right I guess, so, so i guess i was in a, sh a show in for this podcast oh totally a hundred percent and it, that was you know i I saw because, um, you know, for listeners, for those of you who don't know, uh, when we get um, uh, publicity from the publishers and, you know, they're putting out some of the things and, you know, uh, for possible interviews, you'll often see a cover of the book because you get what's um, uh, called an ARC uh, um, and, you know, uh, excuse me, it is a, um, an ARC. It's um, an advanced reader's copy. Yes. Yes, an advanced reader's copy or an ARE, which is advanced reader's edition, basically the same thing. Uh, and you'll see, usually you'll see what the final cover of the book is. Sometimes it changes, but this one came up and first I saw the cup and I was like, oh, well, we're going to have to do it now because no matter what this book's about, it's got a Syosset uh, origin on it but then of course I read what the book's about and I was like oh this sounds like a lot of fun and then I saw you and I said and I've had him on before and he's a lot of fun uh so yes you were cut you were a shoe in it was all um and then of course I opened the book and you're talking about the professional and Natalie Portman and I'm like look 
<laughs> Did I'm you so write this? Yeah. Out. But for real, for real. Um, so Mark, again, just kind of getting back to it. Uh, so he he started out obviously in a very different situation than becoming um an assassin, but I think like one of the things that people really like about these stories, you know, you take a lot of shots at things like John Wick and other uh, movies that have to do to deal with um, characters like this. But I think like one of the things that people really love and you, you touched upon it earlier is that, you know, if you're going to write a story about somebody like him, there's got to be a lot of things about him that make you love him. And uh, one of the things that I thought was really good was just sort of when you dropped the point as to when he decided this was kind of the end for him, when he didn't want to do this anymore, when he wanted to quit. Uh, with When you're pacing your books, are you really planning when you're going to drop certain reveals or do they creep up on you? I think for the most part, I'm kind of planning it out. Um, I mean, I outlined pretty heavily and I knew that I was, I knew that this was a story that was going to be told in, in two parts, like two diverging timelines where you've got, you know, the current, uh, the current timeline of, of what he's going through and what he's trying to get away from. And then the past timeline showing you like sort of the, the highlights reel of his life, or, I mean, I guess the low lights reel, cause not all of them are good, but, uh, you know, and, and it always takes a little bit in the process to kind of figure out like, okay, like which part of the picture do I have to show now? You know, cause I, I could have written a 300,000 word book and then no one would want to read it cause it would be a doorstop. But um, that, that that's kind of the fun part of the process is like figuring out, you know, the best lens to tell the story through. So what are some of your favorite uh, assassin stories uh, that you have enjoyed yourself? Oh, man. I mean, when you're talking about movies, like The Professional is easily one of my favorite movies ever. Um, there's this cool little movie I watched. I think it's called Interview with a Hitman. Uh, that was like this really, really cool little weird movie that Luke Goss is in. And that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, when it comes to the book side, I've always been a huge fan of Chris Holmes books, um, the Mike Hendricks books, The Killing Kind and Red Right Hand, because that was such a great concept. It was about a hitman who killed other hitmen. So like if you had someone coming for you, like uh, if there, there was an assassin coming to kill you, if you paid this guy enough money, he would take out the assassin, uh, which I always thought was like a cool little twist on the genre. And then Yasmin Ango's series, the night series is just so good so good i love it so much and um i mean then then there's frederick Forsyth's the jackal which is just you know the classic of all classics so what are your feel your real feelings on john wick then oh you know <laughs> and, and to be clear like i love the john wick movies like i wasn't i wasn't trying to knock them as much as i was just like you know what there, there is a level of unreality there like they do they they are kind of like looney tunes movies and i wanted what i was doing to be a little bit more grounded and a little bit more realistic so of course like a hitman is gonna like, like a, a more realistic hitman is gonna look at john wick and be like that's ridiculous like, oh no it, it, it hit and it was perfect but i had i had to ask your your actual opinion on it it was um it's kind of like a running theme throughout the book that was uh quite appreciated and it was a lot of fun to read Oh yeah, I mean, like the the fourth John Wick movie, going to see that was like a religious pilgrimage for me. I mean that, and and that was a movie with like four all time action sequences. Like, it's so good. They're they're fantastic, but they're they're a different kind of thing, you know. Um, and, and I kind of liked this idea of like, like like there's the, the there, there's the scene when when um Mark and Astrid are in London, and she's just like quizzing him on on the accuracy of different Hitman movies, and I'm like. Yeah, yeah, this this is this is the kind of material that I want to see. It was super fun. The dialogue was stellar. Uh and am I I I, I believe I've been reading that this has been optioned for um a film. Yes, so this was optioned by Steven Spielberg and Amblin. 
um, not necessarily for him to direct, probably not for him to direct, uh, but to help produce. And yeah, that's kind of in process right now. And I mean, it's Hollywood. So everything in Hollywood is always sort of like, you know, happening in some castle in the sky that I don't understand. But overall, it's it's an incredibly uh, humbling and thrilling experience when, you know, I was talking to the executive who was handling this. And uh, and she was like, oh, and, you know, I had a really long conversation with Stephen about this and he loves this. I'm like, oh, oh, Stephen loves this. Like, you'll have to excuse me. There is no way for me to accept that and be cool. Yeah. And I think what's wild, I mean, how did this, the book itself is not officially on shelves yet, correct? Correct. Um, so I, I mean, I have a very, very good film and TV agent, uh, Lucy Still, and she's, she's really, really good at what she does. Uh, and generally, when I finish a book, she just starts sending, like, once we have a publishing deal in place, she'll start sending it around to people who she thinks might be interested. Uh, this was a little bit of a unique case because she didn't send it to anyone. Um, just one day her phone rang and, and it was a producer who was like, hey, I read this book, you know, I want to do it. And she was like, where did you even get it? And then it, it I guess it had turned out uh, books go out to book scouts uh, for like, you know, foreign presses and stuff. And someone leaked it to someone in Hollywood, then it, it went viral. So, you know, then her phone rings again, it's someone else and her phone rings again, it's someone else. And she, we, we ended up, I mean, with dozens of offer offers to do this. And then when Amblin came in, it was like, well, that's the end of that conversation, you know? Yeah. You can't, you, you can't beat that, especially uh, being, if you're Gen X or anywhere around Gen X, that's like, that's it. Uh, because that's the kind of, uh, that that's one of the uh, studios that you grew up watching um yeah yeah wow that's pretty cool so you said you're working on the second book as we speak um do you have a title for it you cannot share that's fine but i'm just generally curious uh if you have a working title yeah sure uh the working title right now is uh medusa protocol which is so the part of the book is set on a uh, on an island that's full of poisonous snakes. Really? Yep. It, is Which it is based on a real island off the coast of Sao Paulo? I was actually going to ask you if it was based on that real island. Yep. Wow! Excellent. Very cool. Uh, so, are you going to be doing a lot of research about that place then? Oh, I, I already did. I actually I had to speak to a uh, I forget I forget how it's pronounced herpetologist hepatologist like a. a a, a snake expert and um you know uh we talked a lot about like anti-venin and like how venom works and like you know the difference between like hematoxic and and whatever i don't I, like i finished the book so it's all gone out of my brain i don't remember any of it now but yeah no that was uh there was definitely a bit of research there because i i always like to write about places that i've been to which is why in the first book you know part of it takes place in singapore because i've been there and i liked it and part of it takes place in london which i've been to several times uh it's it's rare for me to write about a place like sao paulo that i've never been to but it would also was kind of necessitated by the story so that was a little bit more like you know digging into the history of sao paulo and trying to understand the way the city is built and the climate and the food and all that stuff just so i can give like an accurate representation of that Thank you so much. I am looking forward to more of this and I'm looking forward to when this eventually comes to the screen. Um, I'm really very much excited. I think this is going to be, obviously it's going to be a huge hit if this book was circulating for options uh, before uh, anybody really got their hands on it. So congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's exciting. You know, I'm definitely in that sort of like anxiety riddled space of the book comes out in a couple of days and it's like, oh man, you know, it's, 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 it's weird. It's like you're, you've hit the end of a marathon and then it's like, okay, now it's time to run the other marathon. And, and yeah, it's a fun process. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, this was Jessica with Syatha Library's Turn the Page podcast. Our guest today was Rob Hart, Assassin's and Anonymous. Yes, and we are going to close this chapter. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. 
Join us for the next episode.